coronavirus and hydroxychloroquine, what do we know? Global demand for the malaria drug has soared. U.S. President Donald Trump has said he's taking the malaria drug hydroxychloroquine as a preventative measure against COVID-19, although scientists have warned about side effects. Studies are underway to examine if hydroxychloroquine, and a related drug chloroquine, are effective against the coronavirus. We've looked at what we know so far about these drugs. Who's raised concerns about using them? The World Health Organization has said it's concerned by reports of individuals self-medicating and causing themselves serious harm. President Trump has talked before about using these drugs for COVID-19. These safety concerns have been echoed by a former top U.S. health official. Dr. Rick Bright, who was removed from his post in April leading the government's vaccine development efforts, says President Trump's focus on these drugs has been extremely distracting to dozens of federal scientists. And the U.S. Food and Drugs Administration, which granted emergency approval for using them in certain settings only, has also warned about possible side effects. Is there evidence they might treat COVID-19? President Trump has previously referred to the potential of hydroxychloroquine in White House briefings. At a press conference in April, he said, What do you have to lose? Take it. And Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro claimed in a video that hydroxychloroquine is working in all places, although that was subsequently removed by Facebook for breaching its misinformation guidelines. The publicity given to these drugs led to a global surge in demand for them. Alsted vaccine expert says U.S. is facing its starkest winter. Alsted U.S. vaccine expert to file complaint. Following Mr. Trump's comments in late March, there was a sharp increase reported in prescriptions in the U.S. for both chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. Tablets containing chloroquine have long been used in the treatment of malaria to reduce fever and inflammation, and the hope is that they can also work against the virus that causes COVID-19. There are ongoing trials in various countries on using the drugs to prevent the illness. As part of these studies, frontline workers who are highly exposed to the virus are taking it as a prophylactic. Other studies are looking into whether it can help patients who already have COVID-19. In the U.S., various trials are underway for a combination of drugs including chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine and an antibiotic called azithromycin, for treating COVID-19 patients. But so far, there is insufficient evidence from these trials as to their effective use in either prevention or in treatment. We need larger, high-quality randomized clinical trials in order to better evaluate their effectiveness, says University of Oxford's Kong Binaji, author of a report on antimalarial testing for COVID-19. There are also risks of serious side effects, including renal and liver damage. Which countries authorize their use? In late March, the U.S. Food and Drugs Administration, FDA, has granted emergency use authorization for these drugs in the treatment of COVID-19 for a limited number of hospitalized cases. The FDA is not saying they definitely work. But it does mean that in specific circumstances, hospitals can request and use the medicines from government stockpiles for use in COVID-19 treatment. But on 24 April, the FDA also issued a warning about the dangers of using the substances because of reports of heart rhythm problems in patients. American scientists have begun a trial to see if chloroquine will help treat coronavirus. Other countries are also deploying these antimalarial drugs to varying degrees. France has authorized doctors to prescribe them for patients with COVID-19, but the country's medical watchdog has also warned of side effects. India's health ministry recommended the use of hydroxychloroquine as a preventative treatment for healthcare workers, as well as households in contact with confirmed cases if they have a prescription from a doctor. However, India's government research body has warned against the unrestricted usage of the anti-malarial drug and said it was experimental and only for emergency situations. Several Middle Eastern countries have authorized its use or are conducting trials. Is there enough available? As interest in these drugs has grown as a potential treatment for COVID-19, many countries have seen high demand and shortages. Chloroquine and its derivatives have long been widely available in pharmacies, particularly in developing countries, for the treatment of malaria. This is despite their declining efficacy against malaria, as the disease has become increasingly resistant.
A number of countries restricted sales so that chloroquine was only available on prescription or in hospitals. India, a major producer of these antimalarial drugs, at one point stopped exports. But it lifted the ban after President Trump made a personal plea to India's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi. In Nigeria, households still regularly use tablets containing chloroquine for treating malaria, even though it was banned in 2005 for first-line use because of its declining effectiveness. But news of its possible use against COVID-19 led to growing demand, and the Nigerian Centers for Disease Control told people to stop taking it. Coronavirus, will schools be able to reopen in June? Plans are being made for how schools in England will start to reopen next month. However, there is disagreement over whether children will be returning too soon and how schools can be made safe. Can schools reopen next month? In England, the government wants nurseries and some primary school year groups to return on 1st of June. But local councils and teaching unions are asking ministers to reconsider. The plans are for nursery and preschool, and reception and years 1 and 6 at primary school to resume next month. At secondary school and college, years 10 and 12 would return first. This is just a tiny fraction of the regular school population. Schools in Wales will not reopen on 1st of June, while those in Scotland and Northern Ireland may not restart before the summer holidays. How safe is it to reopen schools? There are differing views on this. Cabinet Office Minister Michael Gove says England's schools are safe to reopen, but did say, you can never eliminate risk. He added, it is the case that it is extremely unlikely that any school is likely to be the source of a COVID outbreak. However, at least 11 councils have expressed concern, and teaching union Noaud is unconvinced it is appropriate or practicable. Young children are super spreaders of other diseases, such as flu, but so far appear to be at low risk of becoming very ill from coronavirus. How will schools reopen? The Department for Education has issued guidance to schools in England. It says they should reduce class sizes, and keep children in small groups without mixing with others. Stagger break and lunch times, and school arrival and departure times. Clean more frequently, and reduce the use of shared items and outdoor space. Scotland's largest teachers' union The Eyes says the country will need to adopt a new blended approach to teaching and learning. This could include a combination of part-time learning at school and home or online working. Wales's education minister has said schools will only return when it is the right time and it is the right thing to do. In Northern Ireland, the education minister said practical measures like PPE for staff, social distancing at mealtimes and safety for school transport needed to be arranged. Who is responsible for reopening schools? Since they were closed in March, schools have been responsible for providing places for vulnerable children and children of key workers in England. Local authorities are responsible for supporting schools and trusts to ensure that they can accommodate these pupils, plus eligible year groups, for a 1st of June reopening. They are also responsible for monitoring demand and capacity, supporting residential special schools and assessing the risks to pupils. Do I have to send my children to school? At present, it is not compulsory for key worker parents to send their children to school and there are no fines for those who have not taken up the places available to them. It is expected that this temporary arrangement, where usual sanctions do not apply, will continue for all parents of any year groups going back in England during the summer term. What about disadvantaged children? As of 14th of May, about 231,000 children are attending school in England, representing 2.4% of pupils who normally attend. That includes 73,000 children classed as vulnerable by schools. The Department for Education estimates this figure represents about 14% of all vulnerable pupils. The government is urging teachers and local authorities to encourage more youngsters from these backgrounds to go to classes each day. What's happening in other countries? Schools in Denmark have reopened, as have some in Germany, and in France, although those in the Republic of Ireland, Italy and Spain will stay shut until after the holidays. How are children currently being educated at home? Schools have tried to continue a limited curriculum online, relying on parents and guardians to supervise. To support home learning, the BBC has also launched a major program of expanded educational content on its BBC Bite Size service, 
including regular daily lessons in English, maths and other core subjects. Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon says schools will not reopen until way after June 1. Piers Morgan has been giving some of his strong opinions on Live It News Good Morning Britain show. Private renters are facing tsunami of evictions after lockdown. Samuel Lovett has said if a cure is found, the world must be ready for what comes next. Researchers develop fast and accurate coronavirus antibody test. COVID-19, government urged to include sign language in daily briefings. News. Scientists warn UK government's coronavirus strategy risking lives UK government targets gamers with stay-at-home advice. Britain stranded in Pakistan outraged at lack of rescue flights. All teachers and pupils to be tested if they develop virus symptoms. Trump is a child with doggy doo on his pants, Pelosi says. He comes in with doggy doo on his shoes, and everybody who works with him has, it, on their shoes, too, for a very long time to come, Speaker says of Trump and his administration Piers Morgan accuses UK government of being a curate and liars. Trump defends hydroxychloroquine habit after insulting female reporter Weijia Zheng with CBS News. Plans have also been put in place for schools to reopen in the coming weeks, as long as the spread of COVID-19 remains on the downward slope. However, schools in other parts of the UK and Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are not expected to open at the same time as those in England.